What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about Nordic American tanker stock NAT. So briefly for those of you who don't know what this company is, basically it's involved in the shipping and storing of oil. So as you can see in this chart, it's been in free fall for the past month. And uh, yesterday was trading at less than half of its highs over a month ago when it reached $9 in one trading day. So as you can see, it's uh, less than it lost less than or more than 50% of its market share. So in short, uh, there has been lots of interest in this and other oil tanker stocks as of late due to the whole Ronis pandemic. So simultaneous oversupply and decreased demand for oil shot these tanker rates way up uh, as companies didn't know where to put their oil. And so a lot of the tankers were just uh, off of the coast, just filling up with oil and raking in uh, millions of dollars. As well, um, because of the pandemic, U.S. gas that was supplied dropped steeply in March, as we can see March and April, um, as we can see in this chart here. And so that followed by a recovery from 5 million barrels of oil per day to now just below 7 million barrels of oil per day, but still as compared to five years ago when they were uh, supplying 9 billion million barrels of oil per day, it's still not recovered at all. Um, so, of course, companies have decreased their oil supply um, and demand has increased, but still uh, oil companies have been oversupplying and OPEC, um, which is an expanded alliance of countries collaborating to control the world production of oil, uh, they cut their production. Um, however, even though it has come to effect, this is still not enough to balance the oil market after lockdown measures around the world cut demand. Um, and so, again, this looks really good for tankers like NAT that can just charge exorbitant rates for storing oil. Uh, and then further adding to this, um, oil tanker production rates are dropping, as we can see here. Um, so in this graph, the rate for tanker production is expected uh, to fall from around 5% to less than 3% by 2021. So again, that's more good news. Uh, less supply of tankers mean that there's more competition uh, for suppliers to store their oil on the tankers. And that again will increase rates. Um, so again, just looking at actual numbers for NAT. So, um, one, we can see that they, although they made quite a bit of revenue, this hasn't really transferred to their bottom line. They made negative earnings, um, even in 2019 here. So, for example, in 2019, although revenue was 317 million, this was against earnings at negative 10 million. However, when we look at previous quarters, it's looking a bit more positive. So um, as we can see here, they showed last quarter 2019 earnings at 13 million uh, and first quarter 2020 earnings close to 40 million. So again, a huge jump, which is no surprise. Um, so this means that they're finally starting to become profitable and uh, neither the management nor I think this profitability is going away anytime soon. So if we look closer to the financial report of Q1, um, here, they maintain that they are in the best position ever regarding their business. As you can see, at point number five that's highlighted. Um, and they're saying that for the foreseeable future, it's going to be a stronger market for them. So, again, let's crunch some numbers here. So, NAT reported a time chart, chart equivalent. So, basically, revenue for their ships to be 45 44,100 per day per ship. So if we assume 30 days per month, and if we take away fixed operating costs of 8,000 per day per ship, uh, and they have 23 ships, uh, we can see that they earned over $74 million. Um, and that's just for this qu quarter. And they said that for next quarter, they booked most of their um, ships at a price of $50,000 per day. So if we do the same math, but we use 50,000 instead of 44,000, we get uh, over $86 million. 
which is basically an increase that goes straight to the bottom line if we subtract the two numbers of 12 million quarter over quarter. So again, that's just looking good for NAT there. Um, and so you might ask, okay, so why is the per share price just free falling, it seems? Um, and I mean, I do not understand it. And again, it's not like NAT is overvalued. So um, right now their market cap is 644 million. Their 23 ship fleet by themselves are worth over $3 billion, sorry, $1.3 billion. Uh, and that's using the rate of $58 million for a used Suez Max vessel. So 58 times 23 ships, that comes out to $1.3 billion. Um, so we can take that, make the case that NAT isn't overvalued, that the tanker market will still be in high demand long after the economy opens up, and they are still earning boatloads of money at the moment in the foreseeable future, and also management is optimistic. Um, and so the market, however, seems to think the opposite. Again, yesterday, NAT was in the red, reaching its lowest point uh, in over a month, now trading at around $4.30 per share after reaching highs of just $9 a month ago. So again, maybe it was just the general excitement where investors uh, piled tons of money and bought into the hype surrounding tanker stocks back in March, where all you could see in the headlines were how much uh, oil... Uh, storing companies were making. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, it's not even like the markets themselves are general downtrending. NASDAQ is, I think they surpass our all-time highs, or at least it's close to reaching all-time highs. And uh, it seems like, well, in the meantime, NAT is just having down day after down day. Well, I'm still optimistic. I'm still holding all my shares. Uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.